Who do you think might be more at risk? The office worker, athlete, musician, or a cleaner? Well, I would think the athlete, because all the athletes that I've ever heard of, and I'm quite fond of athletics, you know, observing it, as it were, mm. I mean, tennis players and so on, they all get very severe injuries, you know, Andy Murray with his hip and so on, uh, Serena Williams with her, her nerves and her, her back injuries. Um, most athletes, you know, footballers and the like, they all get um, severe injuries sooner or later, mm. either through contact or through overuse. So I think they're, they're the most at, at risk. But I think all professions can be at risk depending on what you do. Yeah. Um, and what sort of person you are. Sitting, playing for several hours a day um, is unnatural hmm. um, and, and positively dangerous in many ways. But there are other things that are dangerous. I mean, Norman Mailer, you know, the great American writer, he, he always said that writing damages your body because he used to write for so long, yeah. you know, even with a typewriter or whatever. But you can feel that if you, if you do writing for hours and hours and hours, you don't feel the same as if you didn't do the writing for hours and hours and hours. Mm. And with an instrument, I mean, people are signing up, if you like, if they're, if they're professional guitarists, they're signing up to a life of daily practice. And so they get up in the morning and they get the guitar out of the case and they're playing and they're playing and they're playing. And this happens with, with you know, pianists and violinists and cellists and so on. They're playing for many, many hours. And the, I mean, Segovia had the best concept that you do it only an hour and a quarter at a time. And then you have a bath or you walk around or you maybe do reading or whatever you do. And then you have four lots of an hour, hour and a quarter every day and never any more. Mm. But a lot of players in all sorts of instruments, they, they work far more than five hours a day on it. And uh, they feel they need to. What do you think is the most likely cause of repetitive strain injury in a musician? Well, I think it's the repetitive concept that uh, actually creates the problem. If you're doing something over and over and over again, this is intrinsically unnatural. And if you're practicing a difficult contrapuntal piece of bark over and over and over again, or something which stretches your fingers to the nth degree, um, well, especially if you're holding one finger down while the other fingers are doing independent things, I think this causes a lot of problems. And of course, guitarists, uh, or professional guitarists, are setting themselves a, a high bar, aren't they? And they're trying to get to that level of uh, perfection. Mm. And if sooner or later something goes wrong, because it's over, it's overworking. It's, it's repetitive. It's doing it over and over again. And certain hands cannot take all that. Some some hands can. It's the same with athletes. You know, the, the, I mean, Usain Bolt he has injuries, but um, he has the body, so he has the power to to run um, the hundred meters in under ten seconds. Um, he has the body to go with it, but of course he's trying to go even faster. So that's where the injuries come. He's trying to get there. You know, not only quicker than other people, but quicker than himself. And uh, this is the same with, with, with the, well, with the instrument. Um, you're trying to achieve something which is better than you've achieved before. And the only way to do it is by repeating uh, the uh, difficult passages over and over again. And uh, in the end, you know, you do it too much. Mm. Flamenco guitarists have a huge amount of strain on their right hand as well. Well, the problem with, with the flamenco guitar is, the, uh, is that you have the gulpies, hmm. so that your A finger is tapping on the board at the same time as your other fingers are working. Hmm. Do I mean, they're, 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 they're pretty tricky. And then the strumming generally, but when you, when you actually anchor the, the, the A finger, the annular finger, on the, on the board and then move the other fingers you, you, you're developing a kind of stress which is not natural to the to the hand yeah I mean I think the hand is always or both hands are, they're like um, an aeroplane they will do what they're meant to do but they won't do what they're not meant to do it's a bit like um, you know you can't fly a 747 jumbo jet upside down mm. um, but you can 
do a lot of things, every aircraft will take a certain amount of stress. So that's the same with our hands. But if you're doing something that's in, inherently unnatural, and you, you've got a, a left hand position, um, which is um, contorted in some way, uh, you have a problem. Especially if you you put pressure on yourself to play ever more difficult pieces. Um, this is not a natural activity. Um, I mean, the ideal would be, which was everyone was looking for, you know, the holy grail of um, technique, to have a gradual sad parnassum, so that gradually, step by step, you move from being a total beginner to the virtuoso. And a lot of people like Pujol and Segreras and Shearer and so on, they, they did these methods which are meant to unravel the mysteries. But of course it never worked quite like that. Before long you're doing stuff that is too difficult for you and it's at that point that uh, you start putting strain on the hands which your hands may or may not be able to, to endure. Mm. Um, it's very, very difficult. And that's one of the big things with the guitar, that there are certain um, pieces, such as Barrios, which were designed for um, people with big hands. And Segovia had large hands, large powerful hands. And certain other guitarists have got quite big hands. And if you try and play the same thing on a normal sized guitar with smaller hands, you run into trouble.